Black Men Podcast. Walk with me. Let it ride. That's right. I want to be heard in the black man's world. Simple, they're complicated, just relax and observe. Breaking down of our families, restructured communities. To wake up and see, only your losers are free. Your enemy is your memory. We at your door, black mail delivery. Your enemy is your memory. We at your door, black mail delivery. <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Tall Sean T. Yes, is who I am. Straight Dad is who I am. And guess what? We, we have a old but new face <laughs> to the podcast. <laughs> we have Mr. Daryl Gilliard, a.k.a. That's damn, two Gilliards in a row. <laughs> a.k.a. Yeah, the original um, member of the Black Male Podcast. What's going on, my brother? What's good, fellas? What's good? Yo, no, it's crazy. Don't you got family in Jersey? Yeah, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I lived in Jersey. I was raised right. in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, love out of Jersey. I think their last name was spelled different, though. Yeah, I think their last name spelled because hers is G A I L L. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's actually the way. Um, I think my grandfather they used to spell it like that. My grandfather changed it. Oh, no, okay. I'm saying it'd be bugged out. Y'all motherfuckers be cousins or some shit. But the crazy <laughs> thing is, I think he might be cousins to my cousins because <laughs> I have Julius, and he his family is also from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and they're from the part of South Carolina that my cousin and my dad is from. That's from I, had, I told yeah. to my mom last night about it. And she like she thought about it and she called me. She said, you know, um, your uncle Kenneth is from Sumter, South Carolina. I said, Are you serious? She, he was like, Yep. So Daryl might be <laughs> Evan and Kevin's um cousin. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is crazy. Still not my family. No blood in that nigga. Man. Especially Giants fans, I can't. Like, we can't even do that. You, <laughs> so you would separate blood because of, of, of bad affiliation, bro? I mean, sometimes <laughs> sometimes we just got to do we Go gotta on, do. Man. Sometimes we got to do we got to hey, do. Hey, yo, this is a hating Negro right oh, here. They bro. know that. They know that. That ain't that dude. <laughs> The hateiest of the haters. <laughs> hey man, dot dot say that shit every other podcast. But yo, this is episode 92. 92. 92. Yes, episode did. 92. 91 was phenomenal. We had um Love M. Gilliard on the pod, and she killed that shit. She killed that shit to be our first female um guest. Because once again, we don't interview anybody, we bring on guests and we have um discussions about topics. Um, and she she killed that shit, bro. She all her clips are dope. So that, say um, that beginning part one more time before you start cooking again. Just repeat that. Oh, okay. we do not interview people. We bring on people as guests to have discussions about our the topics that we have at hand. Okay, talk to them. <laughs> we will do so. Don't come. Don't come requesting no interview. We don't do all that shit. No, <laughs> like, if you do, I know you don't if, listen. So right. Um, <laughs> and if you do request an interview, make sure you put it put some dollar signs behind it, and then we can figure something out from there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Get, my, get, get, get the cash app. <laughs> yeah, get the cash app. <laughs> but yo, man, we got some we got some stuff lined up today, man. We got a few items, man. But we, you know, being that this is this is the brotherhood, we got to start in sports. As you can see, myself, Eagles by week champs. Then we got my guy. Dar- my my guy Daryl, he with the good old Giants. They play. Look, everybody know we pre record this shit. We, we pre recording on Sunday, so his team is playing today. Then we also right. got Trey with the Cowboys. They play on Monday at eight p.m. prime time. They bet not fucking lose at prime time. But we don't know. play. Listen though, we don't play bad two two weeks straight though. We very rarely do that. That's a fact. I give you that. Which is stupid, but I mean. So now that we know what happened on Saturday, we don't clearly know what happened on Sunday yet. What do y'all think about the the Jags and the Chargers? Daryl and I watched that goddamn game pretty much at the bar last night. And they was getting their backs blown out. Because Trevor Trevor, um, Lawrence threw, what, three picks? Three or four picks. Like, two of them was 
on his first on his first throws. So he finished the game though. That's what I was just about to say. He yo, he went to the half, came back out, and said, "Bro, we not going out like this." Nah, that 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 young man is different, man. He gonna be special. Yeah, 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 I I agree. You know what I'm saying? And I I I grade interceptions differently. Like his interceptions didn't make me think he wasn't that guy. Okay, young. This is first time on the main stage. The interceptions that Dak though, at this point, yeah, you bugging. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but Trevor Lawrence is gonna be special, man. I mean, he, he, he and got some of those, some of those, the tall quarterback, he got yeah, a yeah. yeah, some of those interceptions were really spot on. All the receiver had to do is move a hand, or you know, what I mean, push out there. And I mean, you got to give it to um, what's it? Was it Asante Samuels Jr.? Yeah, yeah, he was a snatcher. Yeah. He he he's the one that caught all three of them. Three. Of well, them. he got to get he got to get used to not focusing his eyes, man. You know, cornerbacks they. They read your eyes and your movement. So he has to learn how to mm-hmm. do the Tom Brady, have you not knowing where he's moving and, and spread the ball around. But I think he's going to be all right, man. I yeah, mean, yeah, he's, yeah. Just, he's one of them talents. You, you, you try to say he trash, you ain't watching the game, bro. You got to you gotta look too, bro. This is his, what, third season, right? This yeah. is his third season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of quarterbacks don't and even start. Think about it. Season. His third yeah. season and his third coach. Yeah, but his third season and he's in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, and won a playoff game. But look at the coach he got. He got my old coach, man. I don't understand why we fired him. I was mad as hell when we let him go. I'm like, no, we want a Super Bowl under bro. What, what, and, after y'all fired him, what actually went wrong? You fired him, then you hired another good coach. That we yeah. did. That so, we did. what are you talking yeah. about? Y'all always hire good coaches, so it was a reason. Talk to me. Talk to me. I mean, it's the truth. Y'all always, <laughs> y'all always have a good coach with that. Can't nobody deny this. Yo, what, one thing I hate about sports. It's when people start saying shit that they know ain't true just for the sake of saying it. Now, if you're just being a hater like you being, it's fine. It's all comedy. But some people actually stick by the shit. <laughs> yeah, once we have a true blue sports discussion, I throw the hater shit out the window. Like, let's have this yeah. talk. But think like, about that game. How could the game be blamed by the opposing quarterback? Yeah. i seen comments where people did that, and I was like, let me exit the ball. What, now, Justin Herbert? Justin Herbert. Herbert. Justin Herbert. Herbert. Yeah, they were Justin trying to Herbert. Now look where he's at. Yo, bro, they did yeah, not listen, look because bro. of him. Bro, he threw up 30 listen, points. Bro. It's not his fault. Listen, 30 points, you're listen, supposed to win. I, That's that Tony Romo. Bro, I take either one of them quarterbacks over mine, bro. Facts. Facts. Well, I, that's not saying a whole lot, but I get it. <laughs> Yo, man, why we sitting on Daniel Jones like that? Bro, Daniel Jones playoffs. Is, bro he's listen. Playoffs. He's so mid. Listen. He's so mid. Listen. <laughs> listen, let's be honest, bro. <clears throat> we in the playoffs right now because of the coaching staff, bro, and the schemes, bro. Coaching staff ain't throwing that ball, son. But listen, they right put either. they put they put these guys in good positions, bro, to be able to make plays and win games, bro. That's the job. That's, Look at they yeah, that's what they supposed to do. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. But what I'm saying is, we don't have outside of Saquon on the offense. We don't really have no. You know what I mean? Like. Now, look what you're breaking down. You just said, outside of Saquon, y'all don't have anything else. Y'all don't really have the greatest of the receiver core you don't or tight end core. Either. But Daniel Jones is still finding ways to win games that he should not have won. And some of well, those games was because of him. Some of those games was because of I watched yeah. a, a good bit of y'all games because Eagles don't get fully televised um, here a lot. For some reason, Giants games are. But there is an argument that they haven't given him the right pieces. Because if you have a mid-range quarterback, you should have a – just like I'll give you an example. When they gave Dak Amari Cooper, that's when he passed for that 5,000 yards. Right. You know what I mean? You give him a number one receiver and you have a safety valve. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And he had a tight end that had like 80 catches a safety valve. Yep. So if he is a mid-range quarterback and you're going to use him, they got to put the personnel there. Because can't Saquon can't Saquon do it all Saquon is getting hurt every year. Every year. And this is the yeah. best year he had in a in a long yeah, because, time. Yeah, bro. because yeah, because he got a contract to sign next year. <laughs> Ain't that about in the off bro. season? Bro. He got a contract to sign in the I'm mad. I'm lifting all the real. damn weights, and I got thighs like trees, and I stay hurt. So I'm in <laughs> shape just to look good in my pictures. <laughs> that's that's what that nigga is shaped for right now. <laughs> nigga always that's hurt, it. man. <laughs> that's it. Yep. That's it. He played. He played well this year. He got a contract to sign this off. No, yeah, he, he's gonna play well. But is he is he gonna sign back with the with the Giants or is he gonna move on? I don't know if we're gonna pay him. I don't, I don't know, know if we're gonna pay. Him. I don't think we should pay. Him. You know, is you it know worth? I've been saying for no, a while. I had I had, I had this debate right, talking I'm about not, Zeke. You not saying Saquon and Zeke are the same, but 
after about five years with a running back, do you really want to pay him top dollar now? <laughs> right. Right. Because because uh, Saquon is how old? He's not old, um, but he's, he's young. He's like 25. He's like 25, maybe 26, bro. He's young. He's yeah. I mean, he got he still got a good four or five years before he hit. He runs, yeah, because yeah, right. he runs so hard, man. He runs hard too. Yeah. Run, so he's right. hard, that means a short shelf life a lot of times. Right, you're right. Dog, because he goes downhill. Yeah, he don't do all that extra shit. He literally busts through the line and go downhill. It's yeah. hard not to pay but him. She, though. It, if you if you remember Sean, we used to have that conversation about uh the Panthers. Yep. And how they overuse Christian McCaffrey. We can't overuse be. Saquon. That's why right. they stay hurt like that. Yeah. And and the Panthers, the Panthers overuse uh Christian McCaffrey. Yep. And I said it last night. I said, boy been able to do better because the 49ers got other weapons, right? Yeah, so they, unless they you got like Derrick Henry, bro, I'm not I'm not I don't know if I'm paying him. I don't know if I'm paying because you you rely too much. Like the offense rely too much on. Them. Right, you're right. That's you're why right. Stay Chris, hurt. Christian McCaffrey is flourishing over there in San Francisco. For a minute, it looked like Geno was going to pull that game out, and then Geno turned into Geno, and the Seahawks did a Seahawk, and and them niggas went to excuse my friends. They went to oh, I also I have to put out a disclaimer. Dot, we're gonna have to figure out how to stop cursing or add a um a button because. Right. Um, YouTube is now um, they're gonna they're gonna stop demonetizing and they're gonna start um, um, eliminating videos with a lot of curse words in it. You know, TikTok be um, deleting my um, some of my clips. See, mm. yeah, so they sometimes they they'll about, delete a clip and I gotta change the clips up. If you curse in the first seven, I think said seven minutes of the pod, they're gonna automatically flag you. And then if you have curse words and they treating them like the F bomb, because you know you can't really say the F bomb. So they're treating every curse word like the F bomb. That good old censorship, I guess, because they, you know what I mean? Well, I don't know, I don't know what them hoes gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Well, yeah, ain't no hoes on YouTube really, man. I mean. <laughs> If it was Twitter and all of them, then yeah. But nah, Twitter is uh not safe for work. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, but that but I wanted to say that before we get because you know we get passionate about sports and then the words get the so flow. you wait till you wait till like the eight just, minute mark. I just remember, I just remember, F I just remember. F I just remember. <laughs> no, but I'm saying after you get past seven minutes, you start dropping them bombs. <laughs> just don't say it too much. <laughs> Passes some eight minutes. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't really curse like that. Don't, you know I what I say it. too much of? I say the N word too much. I'm trying to stop saying it. You don't even say it a lot. You say ninja all the time. I hate that ninja shit, man. I'm just so confused with that ninja shit. <laughs> I just don't say nothing. I'm like, where do we get this ninja shit from? <laughs> that's, that's three F bombs right there. That's three F bombs. Drop right there. <laughs> if, I, if I said it, I don't even know I said it. That's how bad it is. <laughs> but yo. <clears throat> San Francisco, they pulled that out. That's a good team, man. And I, I say this, Gino was That's doing fine team. until he started pressing. He started pressing, and he just yeah. started making ill, ill-advised um, mistakes. He's not, a, he's not a come from behind kind of quarterback. There's only a few in the league that are that. Yeah, and that's not, not an intro. No, no. He had a few come, come from behind moments, but he he's definitely not a come from behind. Yeah, that's not his strong suit. But he said he wants to spend the rest of his career out there. Yeah. The rest yeah, of his career is like two, three more years. If, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can can't like he got 10 left. <laughs> like, yeah, I can yeah. see myself here for at least a good 10, bro. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he said months. that like he got a long time, right? He got about 10 more months. <laughs> if they don't resign him, there's a chance he don't get signed. You know, the NFL is weird <laughs> like that. You know, hey, yo, let me ask you a question. Y'all think oh. Gino is better than what Cam was before, like when Cam got dropped off his last team? Yes. He's way better than Cam. Cam can't throw past 20 yards. Bro, he was way better than Cam before Cam two years in his last two years in Carolina. <laughs> Yo, but Cam, I, I feel bad for a person like Cam. He's almost like the same situation with Isaiah Thomas. Mm -hmm. Because um, not Isaiah Thomas from the Pistons, you know. I know he's all. I know he's all. Yeah. Because little, they little played, little, yeah. they played hurt, they played bruised, they played when they couldn't hardly walk, mm -hmm. and then just got dumped off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what, Isaiah, my Isaiah is still hooping. But nobody wants to mess with him no more. It's like right. damn. It's My good. thing is this: what is what was the Carolina Panthers supposed to do at at some point? It seemed like the it seemed like Bro was getting more wilder 
as the the year, seasons got like it seemed like he spent more time in, in a fashion contest than he was actually trying to be productive on the field at the end. I don't you know think what they what were gonna give him a problem for that if he was producing on the field. That's what I'm saying. If he was producing, but he wasn't producing. Then he, he was go hurt. to New yeah. then he go to New England where he probably should not should not have never went. You know what I'm saying? And he had some productive moments, but he didn't he didn't focus in it. Like, yo, we all know they say Belichick way is hard. You know that shit before you go over there. You know yeah. that. You know it before you go over there. So you either go there, tighten up, or you go there and do what he did. One year, he didn't want to take the COVID. He didn't want to get the shot, which is cool. I commend him on that. Then he got COVID. Then he turned around and got COVID and also gave it to a couple of players. Because, <laughs> you know, niggas want to hang that, out that, with that, him. That, that don't look good, though. That, that's what I'm saying, bro. Yeah, you, you, just got, you got a chain of events that shows you're just toxic, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. Like, Dude, so, then, so, then you go back to Carolina. Then you go back to Carolina. Do, do some halfway decent shit for a moment and that yell at the camera, game, I'm yeah, back. Man. And, yeah, one good game though. That's it. That's what I'm saying. He had that one good game, yelled in the camera, I'm back, and was a dud the next few games. No, because he can't throw. He yeah. ran for a touchdown and started yelling on back. I'm like, bro, you 6'5. And like take two or some change. You a big boy. Right. You ran for a touchdown. Yeah. Unless you try to be a tight end, you can't do nothing. <laughs> His body just broke down. When when, yeah. when you don't produce, that's when all the extracurricular activities you have start to be a problem. Yeah, I, as long as you produce, kinda, nobody cares. I kind of feel like Cam, one of them dudes that was so gifted and talented, bro. I don't <laughs> think he really put the put the time in. Like, I don't, I don't know that for sure, but like, it just seems like his his like you know how you see how a player's game progresses, right? As they get older, so like you know Michael Jordan that towards the end of his career, he depended more on them fades, and you know what I mean. Right. LeBron don't play the same as he did when he yeah. was, you know, twenty five. That nigga made me sick. Now Cam never well, adjusted. He never adjusted. Yeah, I don't think he. Yeah, he ain't never adjusted. Never so, adjusted. you know, as you get older and less athletic, because it happens to all of us. That's a fact. Well, now, the, the thing, now, the thing the with a lot of um, the thing with a lot of us, especially quarterbacks, a lot of black quarterbacks are like overly gifted. And mm -hmm. if you're gifted like that, you still have to have that foundation. That fundamental, that yeah. Tim Duncan fundamental, you still got to have that when you get older. A lot of us, yeah. the mechanics aren't always there. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that, that doesn't That's, mean all of them. Yeah, there's some black. Yeah, no, 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 no. You a right. lot of black quarterbacks, mechanics went like Michael Vick said. He never even read a playbook until he went to the Eagles. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So we don't yeah. have. That's why Tom Brady, quarterback, is so old. He does all of the study. Yep. He yeah. studies and, his playbook. He and studies he understands. the playbook. But that, that's exactly my point, though, Trey. No, that's I'm exactly agreeing with you. Point. I'm agreeing yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. That's exactly. And that, but and that's the sad part is, man, because we are so athletically gifted in many ways, our mind runs right back to that instead of figuring out, hey, I gotta for longevity's sake, I gotta change my game. That's why I'm hoping Jalen Hurts figures it out because he does great. He does good with passing. Of course, he can run his ass off. He's elusive, but I want, I want as because he's young. Once he starts figuring out, like, yo, I got to sit in this pocket just for a few more seconds instead of throwing all the time, I won't have these shoulder injuries. Because once you come out that pocket, it's a wolf going to hit you. Yeah. You know what he I'm saying? Got five, he got a good five more years running, though, bro. Yeah. No, that's it. No. That boy run That boy run too fast. He ain't going to stop. <laughs> he he got good five like, more years, man. He do run too like, fast. He runs so fast. But, like, even, even Lamar, bro. Like, I want to see Lamar. You know what I'm saying? Lamar got an arm, though. He got a cannon. Yep. Lamar got a cannon, but they don't really put him in a position. Well, they don't give him the, 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 the pieces, but they don't really put him in a position to really get the ball out like that. Trey, well, Trey said something that one time we spoke about Lamar that I'm I'm starting to agree with more and more, but he was like, if you a top-tier receiver, you don't want to go there <clears throat> because you know you're not going to get any passes, really. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you know if you know if your contract is conducive on the fact that you need to um get uh you know 60 receptions, yeah, maybe 
eight hundred yards just so you can get your million dollar bonus. You ain't getting that you, shit. You ain't getting that yeah, shit with Lamar. You're not. You're not going there. <laughs> you're not going in because you know you're not even going to get sixty targets. <laughs> nope. if, I'm a, if I'm a tight end though, right, or a running back that can catch, you good. I'm going to the Ravens because that's why Mark Ingram but, did well. I'm gonna get paid. That's why Mark that's Ingram's the, did well, and that other that white boy tight end. I can't think well, of his you name. Are, you a deep threat, Mark, uh, Andrews, Andrews. Andrews. Yep, Andrews. That's why them two do well. But yeah. receivers, but bro, but bro, yeah. like, but that's that's on the coaching staff to not call the plays like like we was talking about last night. Mm -hmm. RPO, RPO, RPO. They do run a lot of RPOs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when, I, when I made option. that statement, I wasn't. I wasn't, blame, I wasn't blaming Lamar. I wasn't no, blaming you wasn't. Lamar. No, you wasn't. But it made sense. Just the way it is. Yeah, it made sense. But that's football. You oh, that's any pro sport. You you yeah. put together personnel to fit the squad. You get LeBron, you gotta have spot up jump shooters. The Lakers don't, and that's why they are what they are. Man, we had a big ass back and forth with my um my um stepbrother about LeBron. And he tried to make it seem like LeBron um can he LeBron, he said he didn't make it seem like he said LeBron has never made a team good. He went to the that finals man, with with, that with man um, is, that's why I told that crazy, dog, I told that I told him I said bro LeBron took me right now him right now Daryl right now his son a a rookie you know fresh out to the NBA yeah, finals a teenager <laughs> he took he took he took <laughs> all of us to the goddamn NBA finals bro I said you gotta stop that that that's some man. that's some shenanigans nigga Booby Gibson 30. went to the finals bro Booby Gibson ain't been in the league since LeBron left the Cavs. Like I said, spot up shooter. Booby can hit that jumper. He's standing there. You saw, you, you saw what happened to Delonte West after he left. <laughs> See? I'm just saying. Dog, J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith that, and, that and, um, and, and Iman <laughs> Shumpert. Been, been, been from the Denver to the Knicks. Ain't win shit. Get to the Cavs. And 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 when they got traded... Um, J.R. Smith said he had to tell Iman because Iman was mad. Like, man, I ain't want to go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He looked at him. He said, boy, you better shut up. This is rings. Yeah. We're going to win a ring. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, you better shut up. This I think the problem, the problem with LeBron, I was never a huge LeBron fan, but it wasn't nothing, no, no hate. But I like watching him play. I love basketball. So, of course, I like watching him play. But the thing with LeBron is when you're that excellent from the age of 18, everybody's really just watching for you to fail. Like, yeah, it's either right. it's either a ring or bust. It's like if you tell me, uh, what is it like two and five in the finals or something? Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever it is in the final. Right. But he still went like right. ten times. Who else been in the finals like ten times? I mean, whatever amount it is, who else went to the finals that much? Um, Jerry West. That's about hey, it. bro. We are not going to talk about Jerry West. Ever. That's the only <laughs> one. That's the only one. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Jerry on, West. We're not going to talk about on. Mo Cheeks ever. <laughs> Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. I just thought of something. Outside of Kyrie Irving, bro, who has LeBron left and they, like, their careers went up? Like, it's almost like Sun got a superpower where he take everybody else's ability. <laughs> yeah, like, because you think about it, you mentioned J.R. Smith and Iman. Both of them uh, both of them got out of the league, like, shortly after LeBron left. Yeah, because niggas was probably supposed to have been out the league. Yeah. Damn. Um, <laughs> Chris Bosh had his had his health shit. D Way wasn't too much. D Way was holding on to a thread. D Way was that. the crazy thing is D Way was almost going to get traded from the Heat. They want they didn't really want to bring him back until LeBron brought came with him. Him and, and Bosh. Yeah. They was already he was already contemplating going to Chicago. Yeah, but LeBron helped mm -hmm. uh, D Way some more strong years at the end because yes, D Way was worn yeah. out. That's yeah, why yeah, everybody keeps talking yeah, about he shouldn't have went to the Heat. It's like, yo, he helped his man get why? another five year deal and some. Word. Why he shouldn't have went to Word, the Heat? Bro. Why not? He could have went wherever he wanted to go. Right. Wherever he went, they was gonna get a ring, bro. I don't care what team. Pick a team. I would have. I would have. I would have been real happy if it was them New York nigga barkers, baby. And I'm tired of Nick fans acting like they didn't want LeBron. Y'all lying? I, oh no, no, I, <laughs> no. Listen, they was bro. campaigning to get LeBron. I was ready, bro. I'd have went crazy. I, what? No, you know what, bro? We ain't talking talk about Spider Mitchell. This is LeBron James. I'm going to keep it a band. As much as I hate LeBron on the Lakers, I watch a game in here because I just can't be a Laker fan. That inner Nick fan in me, I ain't going to hold you. I'd have been mad jerseys, humans. I'd have been like, man, LeBron jersey. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is going to be over. Been crazy. It would have been crazy. It would have been over, bro. 
<laughs> they, yo, wild. y'all, Cass, yo, Daryl would have called me every name in the book, and I'd be like, yup, I'm all of those, bro. I'm over here. I don't, I don't think he'll truly be appreciated until like he retires in like five nah, years. Of course not. Because you see, um, um, Michael Thompson said some crap about LeBron. I don't think that was. What crap. did he say? Oh yeah, <clears throat> you don't think it was? What did he say? I don't think it was. Crap. He said he don't think it was crap. No, that's just that's just an opinion from somebody that played in that era. It's always going to be that tension between dudes like that. What Did what do you say, bro? I'm trying to find it right now, man. Who Michael Thompson, to yeah. Mike, you said it yeah, to me, Doc? Michael Thompson from the Lakers, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Clay Thompson pops. Yep. Yeah, I sent it to you. You texted it to me, or you sent it? It wasn't it. Um, I sent it to you. Oh yeah, no, you ain't texted it to me. I'm trying to find you, it. Yeah. Yeah, we got to pull it. I think they took that shit offline, son. I no, think they did. He said, I think LeBron, it's I'm trying oh, okay. to tell you. He said, oh. LeBron couldn't have survived in the 80s with the physicality and the words guys say to each other back then. We all respect LeBron's ability, but man, sometimes he acts too entitled like he's supposed to get everything he wants. Now, let me go before you go. Reason why I don't have a problem with that, because LeBron is a fucking crybaby. But to say that he couldn't adjust, I don't believe that. Because if he would have came up in that time, he wouldn't have been a crybaby because everybody was a warrior back then. And you can't tell me LeBron, body-wise and physicality-wise, couldn't have survived back then. And skill-wise. Yeah. So the way he had now, yo, he's just a victim of his surroundings. Okay. Back then, you could not argue with the rest and complain about no fouls. You fought back All right. then. Okay. All right. So I'm at it. You want to go, you go next, Sean? No, go ahead. All right. So this is my thing. We all know that in the NBA, superstars get calls. Yeah. That's the game. So, Why not? As, a, as a level of respect, I feel like LeBron gets – he gets a lot of calls missed that he should get because of who he is. Yeah, if that's he's what so we big gonna, and stronger. Yeah, if that's, if that's <clears> what <throat> we're going to do for our superstars, then we need to do that for our superstars. Like, LeBron should get – them calls that he's asking for. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes. Sometimes LeBron be wilder, bro. No, nah, he do. I think I think the other night, I think I think the other night he was sometimes. the other night he was he he they didn't call a foul. Um in the overtime game where it went in the, it went into two overtime and his layup could have killed could have um ended the game in the first overtime. Yeah. The thing is he got foul on his hand. <clears throat> and to me, the reason why he got he didn't get that call. Because he did that dumbass up under shit that he liked to do instead of just going in and attack the rim. It's right there. He was already right there. But he don't hold the same weight no more either. At the end of your career, you don't get the same calls you would have got in your prime. True. But if he would have attacked the rim front facing, he'd have got that call versus that up under. But I'm a, as a as a as a someone right now, because I'm training to um be a referee. I'm I just want to do some different shit, just you know, the extra exercise. You're gonna miss that call every time. You're gonna miss that upper under call every time. Yeah, I'm not. Because I'm not you're not. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not no I'm not yeah, calling no foul on that. It's like, no, you even. Yep, you shouldn't have yeah. reversed it. Take it to the cup, drop it in. That's always been my biggest fucking problem yeah. with LeBron. Once he, he, once he, in his second year with Miami, he started doing all this extra shit, and it was like, bro, I, we know you talent, we know you gifted. He was supposed to take that whole team. To the cup, just drop them yeah. on in, dog. Take them all, drop them in. So, so basically, basically, what you're saying is like we was talking about D Rose mm-hmm. last night. So basically, Different. a six eight D Rose, because D Rose, like if if you gave D Rose back then some height, or even like a John ja Morant now, <laughs> mm-hmm. the LeBron's body. Shit. I'm shooting. <laughs> no, no, we I'm cool with that. No, we passed eight minutes now. Yeah. But listen, bro. Oh my God, you get them boys that that body with they with their ability to attack, they scoring a hundred. Yo, he, they, they no good. You right. No, he Daryl brought up last night that um because that John Morant dunk, which was he got a bunch of those, but that shit was crazy last night. He said that. That might have been one of the sickest ones, yo. Top yeah, that's what I said. No, that was ridiculous. He pulled that joint way yeah, he, back he, in. You can hurt your arm just cocking back like that right now. What <laughs> bro. you did right now, you're going to feel that. Oh, right. no, my shoulder already sore. <laughs> 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 yo, he said that John ja Morant mar- reminded him of D. Rose. That was like a D. Rose move. And I kind of disagreed for a minute. 
And I only disagreed because D Rose's body at that time when he came in the league was so stocky and small. And he Rose, seemed so Rose compact. Was more, way more powerful, bro. Yeah, and D Rose used to go to the cup with like just craziness. You and, know what I mean? <laughs> he didn't do all that athleticism. But y'all can't um y'all can't dunk on you toe to toe. Nah, he ain't doing that. D Rose used to go toe to toe and dunk on people off like two feet. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. Remember that one he, only, he pulled it he's, back on Sun? Yeah. Like, D Rose, yeah. they say he's only really 6'1. I believe that. They list him as 6'3, but he's 6'1. Like his bounce was just different. imagine if D Rose, the body he has now, like I'm talking about the slenderness, the more cut and lean body, if he yeah. had that body when he first came into the league, I think he wouldn't have had yeah. those durability issues that he had throughout his career. Having that yeah, body. Nah. Hey, hold on. Let's, let's double back. They talk about the physicality in the NBA. When LeBron came into the league, it was still an old, it was still almost the old nigga league. It wasn't, it wasn't, yes. it wasn't, it wasn't like the 80s, though. Of course, it's never going to be like the 80s. The that's 80s what he, didn't that's make all no money. He's saying. The 80s didn't make but no you, money, neither. No, like any but, argument, and I always say this, any argument, two people can be correct. The 80s was different. The 80s borderline wasn't even basketball, man. No. They was fighting. They was fighting. <laughs> they was fighting. What? As, as, Ask Rudy Tom John, Rudy Tom John a bitch about the day ago eighties and, and how basketball was. No, they, you got niggas he, that intentionally didn't take baths. They said Kevin McHale smelled like garlic on purpose. See, it, yo, it wasn't even really basketball back then. It was different. Dog, <laughs> Dog, you got Bill Lambeer going right across the top of your head for All no that fucking guy reason. Going on, man. Rick Don Marley, Sally, John Sally look. looked like the softest dude on the planet right now. He used to go across cats' head back in the yeah. day. Had, he had yeah. to. He had to. <laughs> Well, so, yeah. so, so for Michael Thompson to say LeBron wouldn't last in that era is some BS. Because, like you said, he's he would have been, he'd have been grew up, up in that. Model. Yeah, yeah he, but he, you know what? Why, it's not fair. That's like when Let's, old people tell us we couldn't survive where they came from. They can't say that because we can tell them they can't survive where we're at. Yep, right. You know what I mean, you're conditioned by your surroundings. <laughs> That's so if we would have been born in that Black Power era, we would have been different individuals. Man, I'd have been a militant soldier. No, we, we wouldn't live past forty five more likely. Nope. Yeah, nah, hell no. Nah. Ain't no way. <laughs> hey, yo, let me say this though. Let when did the league really, really change as far as the physicality, bro? When Jordan? when uh, when Jordan, when um the Bulls was beat after that one year the Bulls beat Jordan up. Right. Was it, but not, it was, was it was still, it 89? Nah, it, it was 89. It, it was a combination it, of Pistons beating them up, and then when the playoffs when the Knicks was fucking them up. Yep, yep. And it was like, okay, yep. this is it. Yep. No it, it was like right. 89 because right. That's when he. That's when he um didn't win no more. Hold on a second. Let me answer. I'm gonna answer this live. Hello, Skyland. This is Lashawn. I am on the Black Mail Podcast. How may I help you? Oh damn, my bad. Um, well, Sky, yeah. just say say hi to Trey and Daryl because I got them both on the line. Yeah, Daryl is on the line. Again. <laughs> What's good, Pippin? <laughs> what up? What up? Oh, you had a chance to look at any of the Um, no, not yet, but I am in a few minutes. Just want to make sure that's something we can use. All right, I'll shoot you a text. All right. All right, one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, got that. We got a music video show. We had to reshoot. Um, I had a I had another host, and he it just it just didn't look good. It aesthetically didn't work. So Sky was the original host at the beginning. He doubled back. He made time to do it and um and whatnot. And he's knocking it out. He knocked it out. He did four episodes last night. And, you know what I'm saying? He kept sending me clips and everything and making sure I was cool with it. Shout out to Skyland. Now he working, bro. He working. He got he yeah. went, you know, got in the studio and get some get some dope shit. So we got some stuff cooking. Yeah. But um but oh but yes. this 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 is what I wanted to say. So yeah, 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 yeah. Doing a Jordan era, like when he they went, yeah, that changed. Mm -hmm. You can't let your game was like still that. the game was still super physical because after that. You gotta think them Pistons teams, the, your Pistons, mm -hmm. when you was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The malice in the palace, bro, was really when everything had to stop being like that. Like for real, for real. You gotta think yeah. Jermaine O'Neal and them, you know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. was putting bodies on people like they they were still rough. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It wasn't it but wasn't, it was a different type of rough. I get you. I get you. It was a different type of rough. It was like still defense hand checking rough. It wasn't he wasn't like, throwing no punches. Like the Pistons. Yeah, they weren't throwing no nah, punches. It, it, it was hand no checking because you know Jermaine O'Neal and um Ron Artest before he changed his mm -hmm. name and and um and um Jack, they played defense, defense. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And that was shit. That and but that was what 
That was late nineties. No, that no, that was shit. That was early two thousands. That was late nineties, early. That was two thousand. That was two thousands right. ball. So I say I personally think if it changed 89, 90, and then when did David Stern got hired? David Stern was in the league. You talking about no, no, no. You talking about um David Stern was around the time. Donald, you on the number one pick. David that's what I'm you're saying. About with Silver, David Stern. Adam Silver. No, 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 I'm not talking about Adam Silver. I'm saying David Stern got took over the league because it was somebody before David Stern. David Stern David took Stern over the league up. and started making it international. Because he's the reason why bat NBA is international. Yeah, he David the Stern why became millions right now. Mm-hmm. David Stern became the commissioner like in like 1980, see, 83, why, why see, look, look how you starting to piece it together. And that's when things start, because they started seeing they weren't making no money. All the athletes was on drugs. All they doing is yeah, fighting. You remember, it was the cocaine cowboy area for yeah, the he NBA. Made, he made it more professional. Yeah. Yep. That's he why said, he hey. Start wearing suits and all that yep. bullshit. He, oh, you know, excuse my friend. He walked in. He said, you niggas ain't about to fuck this up for me. Yeah. He pretty much let it be known. A lot of players didn't like him, but he bought the finances, man. He got the economics together. Yep. Because that was that was his first draft. His first draft, and the reason why I know, because his first draft was that lottery draft where the Knicks got Patrick Ewing. That's what that's what I'm talking about. Knicks. That was his first draft, man. That was all done for the league. They need that New York City market. They need that Los Angeles market. You gotta. You can't have both of them teams ass, bro. No, nah, we was can't. not. We was not supposed to have that number one pick. See, eighty four, yeah, nah. sir. Eighty four. Yeah, there yeah. you go. And that That's was that, when, that was when, the um, when they announced That's the number how... one pick. The whole crowd was like, "What?" Yeah. yeah. That's how I know, bro. I base I base a lot of that on that draft. I base a lot of what I remember on that draft. Well, you can't have stars getting beat up by them bad boys like that. Yeah. If you're trying to make money in the league, no. Nope. Well, let's transition, man. We still quick sports. This is the last sports conversation. Um, I don't know how many people watch um UFC, but um John Jones is returning to the octagon. You know, he's been out because he had a few he had a few issues with um drugs. Um, he had some steroid issues as well. Um he like 40 something. Um, I think so. I think John Jones is about 40. Yeah. Seems like he's been fighting since I was in college, man. <laughs> John Jones been fighting for no, he is not 40. He is not 40 at all. He's 35, oh, son. Started at 16? Yo, he is 35. John Jones is literally considered maybe the, the UFC GOAT, but he yeah, okay. doesn't totally get it because of his off the octagon issues with drugs and alcohol. Bro, and the UFC cannot like be trying to get a role model out of those fighters, bro. So <laughs> they need to stop. But John, to me, bro, it's I it's- can't, I personally not a big the biggest UFC fan. I like the but hunt. I like John Jones. So when this game, when this fight happens, I'm he, definitely watching. He fighting the Nigerian dude, right? Yep, yep. Um, what's his name? That's, I can't think. What is that tonight? Start start with an N. Um, yeah. but son got son got super knockout power, bro. And not shit, not even that. Son son going um, son going he gonna tap you out. I watched a col- a collection of John Jones tap outs, bro. He wrapped his leg around a dude's neck. And yeah. just just held him in midair until he tapped him or passed out. He passed out. He wouldn't even tap. He just passed out. And he yeah, let his leg I'm, go and watch him fall. I'm talking about the other dude, the dude he, John Jones supposed to be fighting is oh, like okay. they say they say, yo, he son, he he's a knockout artiste, bro. It ain't too many of them that are though. That's so you know how many people fight. been a knockout artiste that that boy done fought? Yeah, it's it's a different level of fight. Hey, everybody, everybody can fight, hey, fight. I don't care who you fight. That, Nah, uh-huh. this 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 dude different though. This, this, this so? I'm sorry, yo. No, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch some up, clips. Bro. I'm gonna watch some clips. Yeah, I'm gonna watch Look some clips. Him up, bro. This man right here. I can't. Is he got one of them Nigerian names? Bro. <laughs> yeah, he's nah. um he's um. You know I, mean? I ain't really. It's um, Kiro Kiro Gang. That's who he fights. UFC do a lot of them. They just come and go. I yeah, he fight. He fighting a guy named Kiro Gang. That's the Nigerian oh. fighter. They fighting at the heavyweight um two eighty five. Oh no, they fight the other title is UFC 285, but they fight, they um fight for undisputed heavyweight. John Jones is fighting somebody? 285? Yeah. No, they fighting this is UFC 285. Yep, John Jones is back. 
Oh Francis. no, 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 it's not no! I'm looking at my bad. Thought, Francis, it's Francis, thought, not Gould. It's Francis, not Gould, not 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 Jewel or some shit. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. him, yep, him. He's that. That was the fight that I wanted. That everybody wanted. Oh I no, didn't know no, he, no, 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 I don't, no. I don't know nothing about Sarah no, Gain, bro. No, no, no. He is fighting Sarah Gain. Francis, Francis, not Gould has been stripped of his USC heavyweight title fight because he don't want to fight John Jones. Nah, bro. Yes, I'm reading it right here. I'll send it to you. <laughs> Shit. I'm Sorry. reading it right here. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the fight. That's the fight that everybody wanted. I don't he know don't nothing want about it. Cyril. Yeah, yeah, I don't know nothing about Cyril game. It looked like so he I'm... don't want it. He don't yeah, want I... it. Yeah. It looked like he don't want it. He don't want it. No. <laughs> it looked like he don't want it. That's how to make that damn fight. Yup. I gotta you send you the link though, because you click the link. If you click the link in the thing, it'll read more. I'm gonna send you the link. Yeah, yeah. Y'all want it, but he don't you see, want it. Uh, you see just that clip. He don't want. He got stripped of the heavyweight <laughs> titles. <laughs> Stop the smoke, bro. <laughs> John Jones is a killer. He's a killer. Oh man! I don't care how hard you hit, you gonna get hit back. John bro, nobody Jones is wanted a killer. That. <laughs> Nobody wanted the Cyril game fight, bro. I, I don't Yo, even know power, this power man punches is, don't like getting hit, though. Oh, man. John Jones is a man. killer. <laughs> bro, he's <laughs> tough. Legend, legend. legend. Most Yo, <clears throat> oh, yo now, uh -huh. I, I, can't, I can't beat that dude ass, but I'm saying I ain't got no respect for him. <laughs> I ain't got no, I can't right, beat man, let's, ass, tra let's transition, man. Um. Let's talk about this, man, because we we didn't talk about this last podcast with um with love, um. So we'll talk about it now. I think it's more um setting fit for us. And I, I'm not gonna play the clip because it's super long, but it's um it's um it's it's about um father's role roles in birth of a child. This is what um Jay Williams was talking about. How ESPN kind of um shunned him for one to take maternity leave to help his wife. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Wife had had their child, um, <clears throat> and um, she was going through a lot. It was during the pandemic. Had one of the children during the pandemic, and ESPN kind of shunned him after he's been on NBA Countdown. He's been traveling for college games. He's been all over. He does his morning show with um with Keyshawn. He was doing all of that, and they still was shunning him because he wanted to take some time off to make sure he's there for his wife. They made it seem like, well, you ain't the one having it. What, what are you doing? And this is the discussion he had on the, um, I believe, the Pivot podcast. Um, <clears throat> so, there should be no surprises there, though. No, it should be any surprises because most most organizations are like that. But all of us have children. I'm glad you spoke up on it. Though. All of us have children. Um, did you any any anybody else anybody take maternity leave when their um, child was born? They didn't have it when my son was born. Okay. My son's 28. They didn't do it back then. Back then, yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the, the I'm gonna tell you how quick my, my, my dialogue is gonna be on this topic. Uh -huh. when, when she was ready to have a baby, I was there. When the baby was born, I cut the cord, I was there. I had to go to work that night. Mm. Cause it wasn't a situation oh. of where you had negotiations where, or oh, I'll take a disciplinary point. No, I had to be at work that night, or it was possible I might not have had employment at the time. And I was young. I can't be losing no job at that time because if I lost a job at that time, I know where I was going. Right. You know what I mean? So now it's more lenient. And I see guys at work now taking it. They'll take a week. Not the extended yeah. time that Jay Williams had, but you're talking about a whole different level of economics right there. Yeah, right. But um Word. yeah, it's it's I think as men, we need to pay more attention to our women and, and the grind that they go through also, because we want people to understand us and the struggles we go through as men. Our women out here fighting too. Having a baby ain't no easy shit. Yeah, nah. so you want that woman to birth the baby and come home, nurse the baby, and be there for the baby by herself while you go back to work. That's not, come on, man. That's a lot. Yeah, nah. That's a I lot. But see, when my son was born, the in-laws were there. So she wasn't by herself with the baby. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't expect a woman to come home with a baby and be by herself with a baby, man. What you think, there? I'm with Jay Will. Nah, I definitely took time off when Lil Dow and when Kalen was born. I took time off as, um, you know, like like Trey said, you can't just she went through this whole pregnancy, right? Yeah, right? 
now she's exhausted. Right. She has a baby. She's yeah. sitting there with the baby. She's not catching a break. Like he said, you gotta nurse the baby, you gotta dwell it. No help. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like and and think we about, don't really think about live the mental. In... Think about the mental. Yeah. Like it, at one point in time, at one point in time in history, a woman's mother and her sisters and whoever, you know what I'm saying, or the man's mother would come out and all the women would get together and help with the kids. Yeah, you know that shit's a but dub like, now. We don't have none of that a community and uh, yeah. and tribehood as much as we used to back in the day. No, we don't. We don't. Okay. So now sure, you was lucky tribe, with that one. The, the tribe and the community got to be in the household. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like even, even you know, the move that I made, bro, that me and my wife made, taking the kids to VA. You know, we thought, yo, we're going to get some help. We're going to have more community here. We gonna... Nah, bro. Nah, we don't do that. So, yeah, it's in the household now. So he takes the time off. He need to take that time off. He shouldn't be shunned. He shouldn't be. Like you, society asks for us to do more and show up bigger and better than ever like yeah you know my 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 father and my grandfather's they, they didn't change no diapers bro my mm-hmm. father never gave me a bad you know what i'm saying like this men didn't do certain things now, now we doing all of it and you asking us to show up in these spots but then the moment a man what he he wants to right and it's not the world looking at him crazy it's his employer looking at him crazy yeah like, what y'all want me to do? Y'all, oh, so do. y'all come first, right? <laughs> no, you're right. But like, but but like, like Trey said, he's in a different economic situation, bro. And at the end of the day, for real, for real, his name got some. His name and his talent is seen visibly on TV. So if ESPN would have let him go for that, oh, bro, he'd have been back quick. He'd have been I mean, back. He would have he 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 picked up. But the thing is, <laughs> what they really want you to do is hire a nanny and come back to work. But those times. Are special moments for you and your lady. Those are special times for yeah, you to, to bond with that baby. Like, you know, when my son was born, I cut the cord. Like, that's like the beginning of a bond. I believe, you know, all of those things are embedded, you know, within your child. Like, those things are there. Those are foundation builders that we take lightly. It's easy if you got money just to get a nanny. Then you come home, your child don't even really know you. They know yeah. the nanny more than they know you. Yeah, that's a fact. That initial time, because those... Young young babies, they absorb everything before they talking and even doing anything. They absorb their surroundings. They absorb the colors. They absorb the energies. If you have good energy in the home, these children absorb all of this stuff while they're developing. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? And why would you want to prevent me from being a part of that? I'm doing three different shows on your network. I'm on time every show. Mm -hmm. I'm giving bars every show. I'm promoting your network on my social media. I'm going hard for you all the time. Yo, my wife's having a baby. Give me a couple of weeks. Yeah. They have mad people on retainer for fill-ins. Like when you watch the shows when people fill in. They got yeah. mad people on retainer for fill-ins, bro. You can't tell me you can't miss me for a couple of weeks. Because with yeah. that one contract, you got me on three shows. You're right. <clears throat> no, you're right. And I, I didn't, I wanted to kind of take it off of him, but you're right. Because ESPN has always had a um had a um a inse- uh, insecurity thing. Like not even insecure. They had a a insensitive process of what they mm. do in a lot of takes. Um, and I don't honestly, bro, I, I understand because the money, the, the amount of money you can make there and they're the biggest network, but it's so hard sometimes while I see black people go and work for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Word, that's, bro. that's like, especially intelligent black people like a, like a um, Jay Williams, where he's, you could tell he's more than just a basketball player. Yes. He Mike. played basketball, but his ability to articulate um positionings and things of that nature on in and commentary what's his thoughts and to do sideline reporting sideline commentary like the boy is multifaceted and yeah. like Trey said he's been on multiple of your platforms give me this week or give me these two weeks I say for myself my daughter I was young so I wasn't even really working working when my daughter was born <laughs> when um Sean was born the city of Raleigh ju- just so happened they had just gave um us male maternity leave like we didn't have it at first i would have had to just take, i would have just had to take the time huh Turning that um the, at first they gave us only a week they gave us a week oh. and then when davon was born i was able to take um two and a half weeks you know what i'm saying yeah. so 
So when, um, and you know, and that was literally a five year span between Vaughn and Sean. So I was working at the same job at that time when Sean was born, I was working at the city. And when Vaughn was born five years later, I was still at the city and they changed even more within that time. So I was at, I was at the house during all that process. And you're right, cutting the umbilical cord. That's probably one of the, all three of my kids, I was able to cut the umbilical cord. So that was like one of those bonding moments that I, I, yeah. I agree. I think that they, they understand. Okay. I was yeah. in the room. I'm holding them. I'm all like, that. All I, that. I grabbed them and then gave them to him. I didn't let them, you yeah. know, you know, they got to do the chest and chest. I didn't let them grab them and get hand them over. I grabbed each one of my kids and then gave them to their mother. Yeah, you know what I'm for the chest and yeah. chest. I like I made like I remember when Vaughn was born, the nurse was like grabbing him and was quickly trying to move to him. I said, No, no, no. Dad touches him first. She's like, Well, we I said, he's gonna do the chest and chest, but dad touches him first. And Erica right. would sit there and said, Give him his son. <laughs> and then I grabbed him, looked at him, gave him a kiss, and I handed him. That's the, to me, that's the right of transition. We're black. Our shit is energy yeah. based. You you know, yeah. no disrespect to any of our white viewers and y'all may have something different, but y'all don't understand that energy base that we have when we giving our child to our black women. That's yeah. that's supposed to happen. You know what I mean? And I believe in that because, yo, your kids fit, sense that vibe and that energy you're in that room. Now, once I handed, yeah. Davon was the only child that I actually cried about because I thought I was going to lose my wife like during the, the birth. I thought she was going to die. Dog. They had the crash cart out. They had all type of shit. So she fought through that. You know what I mean? So when I handed him over, it was like, I turned my back and face wet. <laughs> and I, I was like, I one, I didn't want my wife to see me that way. <clears throat> and two, I didn't want no one in the room to see me that way. But no, that, sh that should be real, man. I, You know what? Man, I'll tell you, job kiss my ass. I don't get no job. If, if my wife is having a kid, God forbid, she have a kid now that's from the milkman. It ain't mine. You know what I mean, I'm I'm almost sure. I'm almost 10 years into this vasectomy. <laughs> I'm out here shooting the club up and I ain't, ain't, ain't everybody going home. Everybody going home. <laughs> shit, ain't nobody dies. <laughs> so she pop up with a baby now. If, if, yeah. if, if she pull a savannah, <laughs> Daryl ass, hey, he yeah. ain't he he ain't shooting blanks. I am. <laughs> Actually, the crazy the crazy thing is with Daryl though, with Daryl, so Daryl was born in 2019 in November, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. So right before the pandemic hit. So I had my I had my time off. Yeah. And then I went back to work. And then shortly after that, everything was shut down because of the pandemic. So I had dumb time with him. Right, when right. He was born. Everything with but the I, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The world went, yeah. <laughs> Boy came in the world and brought a pandemic with him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I got a I got a video I'ma play. I'm a it's gonna be a nice little blind reaction. Let's see what y'all think. Hold up. Let me get this. Watch that shit come over here over here in the screen. No, I don't want to use that. Having I'm having having small technical difficulties. Uh -uh. Give me a second. It's coming together. It's coming together. You guys talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no dead air. Yeah, no <laughs> I I uh, for some reason my computer acting up, bro. I gotta get another. I gotta get another. Trying to see. Oh, damn! The Knicks play at one o'clock. Oh, y'all hooping? Yeah. Who we, who we play today? The Pistons. Oh yeah, I'm definitely watching. Mm. Y'all go get split. your ass head. I was about to say, y'all go get y'all's head split. Bro, you're going to be a Jalen Brunson fan before it's long. I uh, now you never going to be a Jalen Brunson fan. You hating. I'm not hating. I'm going to be a fan. Boy, that, yo, so nice. I ain't said he wasn't nice. He's now, nice. When we got when we got like Jalen Brunson, how, he, how would you feel it? A lot of people wasn't feeling all that good. How would you feel it? I knew he was going to shine. Yeah, you remember, you we was talking during that time for sure about that shit, bro. All right. Yo, I was, ready? I was happy with it. Oh, ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Right, oh, see. man. Because I'll stop that bullshit Nick talk. Later. Let me refresh this. Take off with eighth grade girls, and I asked them to tell me what their goals were. This one particular young lady said that she wanted to have two kids. So I said, so are you going to have a husband? And she said, nope. And I said, please tell me why you would choose in the eighth grade to have a goal of having two kids 
and not be married. She said, because if I'm married to him, I can't collect child support. And then she said, um, why should I marry a man that I have kids by? He might have issues or something. He might be on drugs. And I said, well, if he's too bad to be your husband, do you really think he's going to make a better father? With eighth grade. Mm -hmm. They don't care about a, a man being a father. But, oh, look at the, right look, there. but look at the conditioning, the thought pattern. Oh, this is an eighth so, grader, bro. I've, I've, so, I've, 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 eighth talked grader. To, I've talked to junior high school young ladies that said the same thing in my father's church. See, we talking about young this ladies. Is, this, this is pretty much junior high. This is yeah, pretty much I junior had, high. <laughs> I had a young lady say to me, she wants to be a stripper. She said she could be a stripper. And if she has a child, she knows she'll get child support and she'll get a check from the government and Section 8. And by being a stripper, she can make straight cash. This is an eighth grader saying that to Ooh, me. I knew a, a grown woman told her her daughter, she's Yo. like, you better hurry up and get on this. You better, she like, what she told her straight up. She was like, at um 17, you getting out of my house and you better hurry up and have a baby and go to the government. And so you could get one of these house, one of these, um these, um these, these project homes. So what I'm saying, she made the homes be pretty nice. Yeah. Just listen. <laughs> they rent you like thirteen dollars and twenty two cents. Yo, that. that think about that conditioning, that is, bro. That is sick, right there, bro. That is I mean, sick as hell, right there. It's sick, but it's un un unfortunately, common. <clears throat> but look where it's more and, common. Look where it's prevalent at. But the the, the crazy thing are is, black women are black. I don't children. think we have to. I don't think we have to look. It's a, it's a it's a plan though. Like it is a legitimate. It's a it's a it's a plan that has seemed to bag on been working. You said seem to generations. They don't seem to do shit. We fell hey, for listen. the plan. Hey, listen. We fell for the plan. Hey listen. Hey, listen. Ain't no seem. We we eat and we eat and I know a dude gets like fourteen hundred dollars a month. And dog on food stamps. Him and his wife got like mad kids, right? Mm -hmm. She can't put him. She can't put him on her on her shit, right? Right. She can't put him on her application, even though he might. He really wasn't making no money. You know what I'm saying? He could have. He could have added to it, and been. You know, they could have got even more with him on it. But because he made any money at all, no matter how little it was. She didn't want to put him on it at risk of getting less or getting none, right? Mm -hmm. So, in that situation, if you're thinking like this little girl is thinking, yo, what's the benefit of me having a man? Right. What's the benefit of me having a man if I can't? I'm getting fourteen hundred dollars a month in stamps, and if they find out he's here, then I'm gonna probably lose all of it. No, you. What's will. the benefit? Yeah. Huh? You will. Yeah, what, what, the man is in the house. You losing everything. Yeah. Bro. What's the benefit of mm -hmm. me having that? And now, like, I got fourteen hundred dollars a month in in that going stuff. I got government assistance with my dog going rental rent. I got, you know, like, so the kids are fed. The kids are, you know, what I'm saying all of that. Now all I got to do is hustle up some money to do the rest of this shit, bro. I, so I, like, I if you if, mm -hmm. if you looking for the easy way, like that's. <clears throat> It's it's a bullshit way, but it's an easy way, bro. I remember my ex, my ex, um, I, when we first got together, um, we were just dating. She was on government assistance. You know what I'm saying? She was getting the food stamps, of course, like majority, and she was in college, and she was uh, her our her place was literally fifty dollars a month. That was it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe less than that. So when I um she asked me to you know she she I was always over there I was always staying with her always staying with her we and she oh she'll stay at my crib but you know she got a kid so I'm, I was staying with her a lot especially once we made it official um I remember yo the one the, I remember a time we she even did that I, I, we split up for a little while she moved to Orlando and then I ended up following later I remember a time and I and I forgot that she was on this process and I was just pay I just you know give it a fifty bucks like yo Henry, just pay the shit here you go here you go. And then I remember a time I had to leave the house. Like I was staying with her. I had to leave the house be, and take some of my stuff. And then she had to hide the other stuff because a uh, social worker was coming by and you can't have no resemblance of a man living here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally had to go hide. Like I had to go just leave. I just jumped in my car, went up the street for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. 
that same day, I said, yo, I said, um, when is your shit up for review? She's like, oh, it's up for review in about um six, seven months. I said, we ain't doing this in no more. Or- I said, uh, I said, I pay mad bills in here, lights, all this other shit. I said, yeah, I'm only paying 50 bucks because your rent is low. I said, but um, if me and you gonna be together, we can't. I ain't about to keep, I ain't about to leave my crib because of no fucking social worker. So when her shit ended and it was time to renew, it was no renewal. And we moved to another place, a better spot. I paid the rent, did all the other shit. Cause I just couldn't, I, yo, that shit just felt goofy as hell, son. Like that shit felt horrible. I'm like, yo, son, I literally got to hide every resemblance of me in here. I can't have no photos in here. We can't show no nothing, you know what I mean? Because you can't really get started. Years, they're still doing it. Oh no, no, yep. I know I know someone that's still doing it. Yeah, I know someone. I know a female right now that's still like doing they, it. They have a duffel bag ready. It's a family member at that. Yeah, yep. that's, just, that's lifestyle. And, and, and yo, as a man, you think about the dudes that don't that don't even care. They like, oh, I'll pick my shit up and leave. I'll go ahead and you know when, when she's women, done, when she's done, give me a call, I'll come back. Some women look for that kind of man too, though. Yeah, word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like word. um there's always a conversation of men and the kind of women we look for, the easy takedowns and, mm-hmm. you know, but there's also women that look for men with no drive. Because mm-hmm. they put them into that home. They don't have to be pushed either. They can stay on Section 8 forever. Now, I know nobody's <laughs> ever had this real conversation. Nobody wants to talk about that part. There are a lot of these women that will bring you in their house yeah. and pay that $40, mm-hmm. 50 miles until they're 60, 70 years old. And that man, when they know where the people is coming, they pack their stuff up. Like you said, they get in the car, they go up the street, or they go to mama house, or they go to their brother house and hang out, spend the night, then they come back. That's their life. That's their rotation. Yep. And they do it so long, it becomes the norm. And then the children see it, and then they follow the routine. And it's a cycle. Yep. That's and a fact, bro. It's a fact. Yeah. That's and so sometimes the woman will meet a man that'll say we're bigger than this and they do it. But some women, it's like it's like when you go, I remember when I used to go to strip clubs all the time. I mean, I had my run in my 20s. And um, there'll always be a guy that'll meet a stripper and tell her, you're bigger than this. You can do better than this. He ain't trying to say right? it. <laughs> yeah, but certain people, and I'm not knocking anybody, certain people just do what they enjoy doing. There's some yeah. people that enjoy doing things that we feel are so negative and so derogatory. But they actually enjoy what they're doing. And we can yeah. say it's stupid, but it's not for us to understand. You got yeah. people that are <laughs> exotic dancers that have right. been doing it forever and they love it. Right. I had a homeboy that was like that, man. He he tell this stripper all type of shit. And I was like, bro, you barely can take care of yourself. Yeah, you <laughs> bigger than that. You do so many things you're not here. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? You got <laughs> you don't know what's bad. These men, shake her ass, man. <laughs> these dudes, and, and I'm not knocking men on this. This is just a reality of how foolish sometimes we can be as men. A lot of these men have women at home that fight for them. But they will tell this stripper that they know nothing about. You're too big for this. You're too good for this. You're beautiful. You're intelligent. <laughs> Where did you get this? <laughs> I see you every week. How you communicate with people? You articulate uh, words, and I'm like, bro, I'm, you, yo, you be looking at your man like, <laughs> man, go to the VIP like you want to do, man. Let's get out of here. And hey, yo, and that's the crazy thing. The joint that ain't that ain't they first time hearing it. They done heard that shit fit the other that's time. That's the game yeah. to make yeah. you feel yeah. good about that's yourself. Yeah. And while you saying yeah. that, they're gonna cut you off. You want another lap dance, baby? You want to go to VIP? Yeah. You still woo 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 woo. <laughs> I gotta go talk to a few people. I'll be right back. And you pumping your chest like you did something. Yeah, nigga, she coming right back, Shay. <laughs> do nothing. Yeah. He do absolutely nothing. <laughs> All right, man. Um, yo, quick one, man. We about to end this. Um, yo, let's ask yo, Daryl, what you got going on, man? Anything you want to um promote and say, man? Since you, we haven't had you on the pod in about what eight years, man. <laughs> it's been a minute. It's been yeah, a it's minute been now. Minute. Just uh, it's working, man. Just uh, you know, building this construction company, man. Working on cell phone towers, doing it for myself now. Proud of that. Um, yeah. 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 Having a good time with it too, man. Um, so just you know, just building and trying to expand and jump into other things, bro. Um, build a whole empire, you know. Um, steady as we go, you know, it's been one thing at a time and 
it's grown a lot. You know what I'm nah, saying? Of oh. course, you you both know that. Oh yeah, no, I can attest. You you definitely kicking ass and taking names out there. Yeah, trying to make it happen, bro. <laughs> I, know, I know that's right. Dot, got any last words for for the for the for the podcast viewers? Um, nothing fancy, man. I just want us all to get back to the foundation, man. Um, get back to the core of family, love, building with each other, community. You know, keeping our families together because so much has been happening lately. You know, I'm not gonna come with no fancy bars to end this off, but a lot of things have happened to touch my spirit and the people around me. You know, people I love when they hurt, I hurt. We gotta get that foundation, man. We need each other, I and mean, none of us are doing this alone. We always try to. All of us have tried to, but something always happens in life to make us realize we are not alone and we can't do this alone. That circle don't have to be a big circle. It could be a half moon, but we got to cherish and embrace what we have, man, and love each other, uplift each other, and inspire each other. That's a fact. That's Trey, a fact, preach, man. Preach, preach, preach. Preach, <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Trey does our, our ending closing. Preach, I, preach. I normally don't say nothing. I just do the um ending, but um, I just want to say I think, thank you, brothers, for being around me, man. It's been a trying week. Um. You know what I mean? Um, rest in peace to my pop. Uh, he passed away on Tuesday. So we got a funeral coming up. When this podcast airs, the funeral will literally just be a day pass. Um, it's been a kind of trying time, man. You, you just be thinking about certain things. So what you just said, Trey, was um was definitely um it definitely struck a chord. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um cherish the moments you have with the people that you love and care about. Um don't be afraid to tell them you love them. You know how men are. We 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 too tough sometimes. We don't do that here. We don't do yeah. that here. You know, nah. So with my pop, yo, it was it was great. He's not my biological, but he was someone that was very instrumental in my life. And I used to tell him all the time, like, yo, love you, man. And I remember the few times he said it back and I just laugh. I'm like, look at him, man. Old man showing his affection. So, you know, he'd be greatly missed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, the more and more I think about him, I'm like, damn, can, you know, you don't realize how much a person affects your life until you, until they're right. gone. That's the sad part about it, so. Cherish the moments you have, like you said, um, and appreciate those that's around you. And um, you know, what I mean, I don't know who you know. I don't. I ain't the most religious person. I'm. I'm. I'm spiritual. I'm not. You know, I'm not really based in religion, but um, I, I make sure I, I I say my one twos and and to the Most High, especially with my mom having to deal with something like this is big. So I thank you, brothers, for just even being around and being there for me, man. Um, yesterday was needed. And I um, love y'all both for it, man. Yeah, that's just power. Every, every, every memory has power, man. That's what we got to remember, man. That's why I always speak on creating memories, man, because, you know, you don't, you never know when anyone's last day is. You never know when the last time you're going to see a person. So you can't take advantage yeah. of the time. Something as simple as us sitting down, having a meal, and watching the game, man. There's power in that, you know? So yeah, that's, dope. That's, something, that's something we can build back on. Yeah, and build from. You know what I'm saying? We got to do it again. Keep doing it. Oh, well, yeah, for sure. While we breathing and healthy enough to do it, yeah. I Listen, I, I I saw I saw another real quick. I saw another one of my homeboys yesterday. Um, before I met um you and your wife, Sean, before me and Savannah and I met y'all out, and uh, bro, son just kept telling me people who died, like yeah, you know, the the cat that owned um Ferritage mm -hmm. passed away, mm -hmm. had a heart attack, like. We get and he was 43, bro. We getting up out of here, uh, at a moment's notice. And, um, you know, Sylvester had a good long life, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he touched a lot of people, still young to be up out of here, but he's he's lived a full life. And, but we think that we're gonna make it to that age to say, well, you know, I, I've got 70 some years in, I'm, I'm good. Um, but it don't always happen that way, bro. And it, it, it almost rarely happens that way, especially for uh, men of color like all of us. We don't go to the doctors enough to get ourselves looked at and checked out enough. Um, we don't all do the healthiest things. I know I, I definitely suffer from that. Um, so we just got to take care of ourselves and take care of each other and, and be and hold each other accountable, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. For ourselves. I agree. Know? Yo, last man note, um, and I thought about this. What my pop did was was smart. My pop had life insurance. Fellas get life insurance. Oh, we we still at a lot of us are still at a healthier rate where we could get life insurance. Get life insurance. You know what I'm saying? I have life insurance. I have two policies. You know what I mean? I got a whole life and a term and a term life. You know what I mean? I got almost a million dollars in life insurance. Get fucking life insurance. Like definitely oh. get life insurance. Like. 
your family. Yo, you don't want no one struggling to pay to get your ass in the ground. That shit is expensive. Yeah, it is. I look at that sheet. Something. I look at that sheet of them charges. Yeah, it's crazy. You never know until you see that sheet. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I, a couple it. thousand dollars for a, a cement headstone. Yeah. That's why a lot yeah. of people a lot of people got like my parents already have their headstone. <clears throat> yep, a lot of people do. Yeah, they already but it go it goes it goes past that though, Sean. Like mm-hmm. you want your people to be you want your people to be right after you go. Yep. Like you do all of this work, we do all of this work to pay all of these bills. And and most people, most people in the world live in check to check, bro. You don't want to die check to check, bro. Mm-mm. Because once them checks start co- stop coming in, now everybody that income that you was bringing is gone. Yep. And so that's why yeah, you have they might be able- insurance that hold them down. Yeah, yeah, they might be able to get enough money on, on um whatever donations or whatever to bury you. But then what happens when the mortgage comes in next yep. month? And get a trust, get something, yo. You mm-hmm. gotta get something. You gotta have a, a will power of attorney to someone make sure you update your beneficiaries because we've all been married before and don't have your ex-wife on your beneficiary because it happened to someone he had his ex-wife he he was with 10 years had his ex-wife on his beneficiary has been with his current wife for 11 years and his ex-wife got his um life insurance policy you know what i'm saying Mm. that's not my pop that's someone else but be Mm. pretentious to make sure you update your shit as men Make sure you have something in writing, like literally, like Daryl just said, when the when the mortgage come around, you want your family to be able to still handle it. The way my way all my shit set up, you know, is even though we're currently we're gonna end up selling this house and we're gonna buy another one, the way my life insurance is set up, the fucking mortgage is gonna get paid off immediately. Yeah. Mortgage gets paid off. Knock that right on down. So now E. Don't ever have to worry about that mortgage. She can live in that house or sell that, or do whatever the fuck she want to do. Mm-hmm. And like you said, bro, I got other tangible things that's going on, tangible things that's going on where they can always eat off of me for at least 20 years after I'm gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's up to them to build on from there. But we got to make yeah. sure we do those significant things. All right. So this is the Black Male Podcast, episode 92. Um, Shit. It's just the Black Male Podcast. The TS is who I am. Check that is who I am. And Daryl Gillian, who I be, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we out, y'all, man. Catch y'all next week. Peace. All right, bro. Love yeah. y'all, man. Hold on.